Hello, I'm Orange Cat, and this is my analysis for Tanami's ratings for April 27th, 2019. Let's start with the top of the block. Dragon Ball Super did a 0.34 this week, which considering last week was a 0.36, it's a bit of a disappointment. However, Determinant of Powers gently bounced around between like a 0.32 and like a 0.41. So I think as long as the episodes stay within this range, then that's really a good, acceptable number for the show. So it stayed within that range, so not that bad. But the problem starts with My Hair Academia, plummeting 600 to a 0.18 this week. Very disappointing considering where we are in the show. Right in the middle of the Bakugo retrieval arc, right in the middle of the well-loved season 3. And you don't want to see numbers that low during these types of episodes. I mean, but, I mean, here we are, you know. My Academia, pretty poor retention, barely retaining more than half of Dragon Ball Super's 18-49 to 49 audience. And that's not, that's not really conducive. It's something I kind of worried about with when I did my schedule analysis for this current schedule that Boruto I thought was much more fitting to follow Dragon Ball Super than My Hero Academia, especially where we were in the show. And this type of thing is kind of giving credence to that, you know. And afterwards, we have Promise Neverland. It drops also 400s to a 0.15 this week. Disappointing considering this is a short run show. We're a quarter of the way through. And in my opinion, that's the best show on the block in terms of quality. However, non-action related shows typically, at least recently, have had a very poor history on the block. Like, in recent memory, you have Pop Team Epic last summer. Yeah, remember Pop Team Epic actually aired last summer at Tanami for some reason. I mean, I loved it, but it, it was a killer. It, it, it was not good for the ratings. <laughs> it, it killed the ratings, especially for the end of the block. And the same thing this past fall with Fully Cooly Alternative. Another show I generally liked, however, was just poison for the ratings, you know. So afterwards, you have Sword on at Line after Promise Neverland drops 500 to 0.14, nearly retains all of Promise Neverland, which is kind of a disappointment considering the fact that the previous week, two weeks it actually built on the Promise Neverland. But I digress. Sword Online kind of is always going to be a slave to the ratings of the Promise Neverland. It's never going to go too much higher. It's never going to go too much lower than it. So, but again, also, and this really wasn't the most exciting episode of Alicization. It was the one with, they're in the library talking to the Cardinal system, basically explaining how the rest of the plot's going to be up until the break we hit after the 24th episode, which I think will be sometime in mid-July. But yeah, action picks up again next week, and maybe the ratings also increase alongside that. Diamonds Unbreakable drops 600 to 0.13. Kind of disappointment when considering the fact that Thumbs Unbreakable was really staying consistently in the high point ones, getting close to that point two number so often. And especially considering this is, at least in my opinion, the best little mini arc in Diamond is Unbreakable, the July the 15th mini arc. You know, very reminiscent of Pulp Fiction, which I'm pretty sure at least was an inspiration for Iraqi when Iraqi, Iraqi, how you pronounce that, when he was creating the original manga. So then you have Black Clover afterwards, down 400s to 0.15. This is actually an upside for the show. It building actually a bit on Diamond is Unbreakable. And it's done that a few times in the schedule, I believe, already. At least once, maybe twice in the schedule already. I mean, it's the type of show, it's just a very steady show to have late in the block. It's kind of becoming the new Naruto in that way, that you know, regardless where you put it on the block, you're going to get a pretty similar number. And I, right here, Adult Swim or Toonami is using it to their advantage. Keeping it, keeping it later, even though the original plan was to push it up pretty early in the block. And I think it was a smart thing to keep it down here. It's got a loyal, devout fan base, and it's just going to keep bringing in these types of numbers. Then you have Boruto at a point one three this week. Pretty disappointing to see, considering how it was at least the second darling of the block for a while behind Dragon Ball Super. That when it gets pushed down, it just keeps dropping these numbers. It went from 0.17 to 0.16, now 0.13 at 2 a.m. And at the same time, though, I mean, it's it's not... It, you're never going to see a show hit a 0.2 this late in the block. You're just never going to. But at the same time, you feel like Borto had a shot to maybe buck that trend, considering how it was relatively new to the block. Oh, it definitely had a fan base. It carried over a bit of the Shippuden fanbase, which is, I guess, ultimately part of the reason why they paired it up with Naruto again. But I digress. 
Nar- Boruto's dad, Naruto, did a point one three also this week. You know, like father, like son, I guess. And Naruto typically gets like point one two to a point one four when it's in the middle of an actual plot. And actually writes a little writes a little better when it's in a filler than when it's in a plot. And we just left the longest filler arc in the entire show in the boat arc. So I think we got plot for another like ten or so episodes. I'm not hundred percent sure until we get filler again. So let's see if the ratings increase then. Hunter Hunter come in the home stretch for the show at a point one three, like the previous two shows in the block. Or at least roughly similar total viewers too, both staying in like the mid two hundred and eighties or so, thousands of viewers, you know. So it's interesting to see. Hunter Hunter has actually seen a little bit better ratings in this arc than I actually saw towards the end of the Chimera Ant arc, which is interesting considering how most people would say favor the Chimera Ant arc. Yet again, I guess this arc's a little more in- intro viewer friendly because let's be honest, you can't just jump in the middle of the Chimera Ant arc and not be insanely confused at what's actually going on. And then you have the Attack on Titan rerun dropping 300s to a point one zero. Be it again. It's a rerun, so you really can't take those ratings seriously. So some big takeaways from the block. You have just My Hero Academia really starting to crumble a little in its slot. It's not retaining the way Boruto you was. And that's just something that might cause an emergency schedule change. If you see these types of retention numbers from the next couple weeks or so. Promise Neverland not really making... The ratings are hiding the hype behind the show. Like, I think it's the best show on the block. And it deserve, definitely deserves better than a point one five. But at the same time, you know, I can understand why some people don't like it. It's it's definitely not going to be like one overpower stand versus another overpowered stand. It's, it's more of a psychological thriller. It probably reminds me of something like the movie Silence of the Lambs in a way. You know? But instead of skinning people, it's about eating kids, so... You know, another one's Black Clover, really starting to look like the stalwart of the black back end of the block. Something I think it's become a very invaluable piece to Konami in terms of ratings. And then other than that, I guess it's just really just other than that, very according to script. In general, I'll say this was kind of a subpar week, though. What do you guys think? Do you think this was a good week for the block? What's your current? What's your favorite show that's currently on Toonami? I want to hear your opinions down below. I am Orange Cat, and that is all.